Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and from two new horror films from 2024, we go to one that is much older from 1990. This is The Exorcist 3 or The Exorcist 3 Legion. Um, so yeah, it's the third film in the Exorcist franchise. It is, like I mentioned, came out in 1990 and is based on the 1983 novel Legion from uh, William Peter Blatty who also directed this film. Um, so yeah, it stars George C. E. Scott, an older actor who <laughs> I've been watching a bit in recent years and I'm, to be honest, I kind of like his curmudgeon kind of like, you know, a grumpy man kind of uh, a performance. Uh, uh, he basically is that kind of a person, but I mean, at least it, that's what he comes off in most of his acting, but he is, um, I mean, it's a pretty good presence. Every, I've really been enjoying his performances. We've also got Ed Flanders, Jason Miller returning, Scott Wilson, yeah, he also was old, I guess. He pretty much just looks the same. Nicole uh, Williamson and Brad Dourif. Brad Dourif, my friend, one of the creepiest actors. One of, possibly one of the nicest people as well that you know you can actually see. Uh, and if you don't know who Brad Dourif is, he's the voice of Chucky. He's in the movies, uh, in the Chucky films, and he also had a couple of uh, appearances in Star Trek Voyager, Alien. Uh, three, uh, sorry, Alien uh, Resurrection and yeah, quite a few other films. Um, yeah. Uh, Alright, so we've got 15 years after the events of the film The Exorcist, although it's actually 17 years later. And they basically are ignoring the events of the previous film. And you have Lieutenant William F. Kinderman, uh, this time played by George C. Scott. Uh, and he's investigating a series of demonic murders in Georgetown uh, that are basically the signature of the Gemini killer who's supposed to be a diseased serial killer and he died uh, roughly the same time as the events of the uh, as well, uh, the exorcism was happening um, around that same time so and basically the Gemini killer is, is sort of inspired by the real life Zodiac killer uh, yeah so apparently he loved the exorcist <laughs> uh, so so i heard here um, anyway this movie is a little bit complicated to go through uh, basically you've got the investigation happening and it turns out that the uh Pazuzu was really pissed off at uh, the priest father damien Karras. so when damien uh, was able to get the upper hand and expel uh, Pazuzu off from his from the girl and into him and then managed to get the upper hand and kill himself so that Pazuzu can Pazuzu idly who gets killed at that time so he thought but what he basically does is he takes on or rather he possesses the spirit of the Gemini killer and uses that uses him to take possession of Father Damien's body but his, his spirit is still there and he has to watch in horror as the Gemini killer does all of these atrocities. So there's that story. So that's as much as I can actually put it. So yeah, there's exorcism and towards the end, there's all that stuff happening. There's a couple of creepy elements to this movie. It is a little bit dragging for a while, but towards the latter half, it does pick up the, the old woman uh, possessed by Pazuzu and uh, walking on the ceiling is, is creepy as fuck. And then she takes, um, she has to go, she she takes a, 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 a basically a, 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 a nurse's outfit and then goes to the house of uh, Kinderman and almost kills his daughter and she is very powerful over there. Yeah, the, pre, the thing happens and Brad Dourif's performance as a deranged possessed, oof, man, he's absolutely fantastic in this film uh, yeah so I also want to say some of the funniest stuff happens at the beginning of the movie for um, you actually basically see this church uh, where apparently something supernatural is happening so this wind um, big huge gust of wind breaks I mean pushes open the door and uh, uh, you know the uh, <laughs> It has these locusts coming in and the crucifix, Jesus Christ opens his eyes and it looks very comical to be honest. And uh, Jesus 
have to stay there and moan and not do anything. Um, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> that was really funny. And uh, yeah, so we've got all the hallmarks of a, a religious kind of film. Uh, I do enjoy the latter half of the movie, uh, but it does take a little while to get through. I also was happy to see another older actor, uh, I believe he passed away a while back. Uh, not Ed. Yeah, Ed Flanders, who plays Father Joseph Dyer. I've seen him in a few movies as well. Uh, and he was in St. Tales, uh, from 1982 to 1988, so he's a very familiar face to me. And uh, yeah, um, so that's another. Uh, old actor who passed away in 1995, so yeah, older actor who has made it. Like I mentioned, man, Brad Dourif, you, I mean, your acting was absolutely brilliant over here. Oh, and I do want to mention, <laughs> Kevin Corrigan plays an altar boy, an older altar boy. Samuel L. Jackson plays a blind man. Whew. Before he became famous. Uh, yeah, that's about it for this movie because like it's it is actually kind of wild. I do like some of the scenes in the film. Like I said, it picks up way towards the latter half of the film, more towards the last thirty minutes. Good uh, ending, but it takes a little while to get through. Made on a budget of eleven million dollars, the movie made forty four million at the box office. It's got mixed reviews. Um, yeah, uh, I'll give it a seven out of ten. It's good. Especially, like I said, wherever the portions were. Jason Miller returning as Damien Karras, but he's actually given a name as Patient X. Uh, yeah, so. Right, that's basically it for this movie. Have a good night.